to the video du jour. Thank you for your interest in the subject matter. I appreciate your time and I hope that this video will be helpful to distinguish between rotting pseudobulbs, aging pseudobulbs and potential future rotting pseudobulbs, how we deal with it and I hope to get all that on camera. Now, once I get going with handling the removal of pseudobulbs, if that is something that we're going to need to do, I cannot stop what I'm doing based on what noise pollution is behind the hedge. So I ask for forgiveness in advance if I cannot edit any funky things going on that we do not see on this side of my patio. You would think this subject is pretty quick and straightforward, and yes, it could be, but I do want to elaborate a little bit more because there are several reasons why pseudobulbs decline. We see something going brown in our orchid and we immediately want to get rid of it because it can attract pathogens, bacteria, and fungus that feed on decaying material. And that is exactly the best practice that we should do. Get in there, remove it, let the rest of the orchid continue along its way, not posing any future danger. The thing is that not always is it wise to be removing something simply because it looks brown and looks nasty. There could still be some reserves in the pseudobulb that the orchid is drawing from. Getting brown pseudobulbs is something that is either a natural process of the orchid aging, it could also be far too low in the media and there could be a reason for rot. And if, for example, a pseudobulb is decaying declining as per its natural process, it should be firm to the touch. If it's declining as per its natural process and is starting to feel a little bit soft, that is the time I would cut off a pseudobulb even if it has not depleted fully. So in front of you, you see here my Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry. This is a classic example of a pseudobulb that has gone past its due by date. Several reasons. It is old. Clearly, it's at the end of the rhizome. But also, that wouldn't be an issue if it was just depleting or by itself, eventually it would dry up and then we could just nip it off. But in this case, it is somewhat buried also into the media and the media is constantly wet as part of its culture. So this is posing a big threat for rot and I shall be removing that even though this is not a rotting pseudobulb based on the setup. It is an old bulb in the back that is naturally depleting, but it can be a problem based on the setup. I hope that makes sense. Another example we have here, this is a Coilostylus and she's a warm to hot grower. She's a very vigorous orchid, has never really given me any problems. However, my conditions have changed this past winter and things are a little bit colder and she had to tolerate conditions that she absolutely does not appreciate. So we have two things going on here. We have a pseudobulb right here that it's lost its top leaf, but it's not the old part of the orchid because here we have a tiny little secondary growth from the summer of the previous year. So this is the front part of the orchid and clearly the cold took out this growth and subsequently the pseudobulb is drying up. And drying up is the key word here because it is still firm. There's a little bit of give to it and that is fine. At least it's firm. So I'm not going to interfere in cutting this one off seeing as it's very, very close to the lead of this angle of the orchid. I do not want to jeopardize this leaf. However, it is key in moments like these to really monitor the decline of a pseudobulb. As long as it stays firm, leave it on, do not interfere. And one could say that goes for the entire orchid because here I have some pseudobulbs that are at the back of the orchid, the oldest part right here looks exactly the same as the one at the beginning of the orchid. And this one is due to age, it's done its job. The decline is the same. It is still very, very firm to the touch. Now it would be easy also to go in at this point in time and remove this pseudobulb just for aesthetic purposes. I'm not gonna do that because it's not posing a threat. The moment I make an unnecessary cut, that is when I could start to threaten the orchid by opening a wound where pathogens, etc., could enter in. We can treat with dragon's blood, any cuts, or we can go in with cinnamon as well. But seeing as that pseudobulb, the only thing that it's doing is making the orchid look unesthetically pleasing to the eye, at least there's still a little bit of nutrients left in there before it really is depleted. And in this case, I just highly recommend just to leave it alone, let the orchid dry it out, 
and drying out is key. If it gets wet, if it starts to soften, then go in and take care of it and seal any wound with either dragon's blood or cinnamon. The thing with the back here, we have ourselves a uh, Lisiara, Peggy Ruth Carpenter. All right, so we have ourselves some gorgeous little growths here in the front. Everything's fine and we can clearly see that the back bulb right here is depleting. It's old, it's done its thing. This back bulb has been in this state of decline for over six months, gradually and slowly getting a little bit thinner, a little bit more shriveled. Never mind the brown part, that is cell damage from four years ago when this orchid was acclimating. However, this back bulb has served its purpose and I never took it off because it's just depleting energy back into the rest of the orchid. Now, though, here's the difference. This back bulb is starting to feel soft. It's not a firm softness like with the coilostylus over there. This is starting to feel soft to the point that I am not appreciating how I can squeeze this bulb and the give it's giving me. Including my very cold temperatures at the moment, it still hasn't posed a problem for me, but it could because of its softness. This should be hardening off and depleting in a harder texture kind of way just like the coilostylus. So we will be removing this bulb and I'm gonna try and get that on camera. You can see how deep that is in the media. And well, <laughs> of course, Aliciaras have a habit of climbing. So the rhizome is way down there. Once again, not to be mistaken with rot. The rhizome is fine. There is no rot in the rhizome. This is an old bulb depleting but because of the cold temperatures, it's not depleting dryly. It's depleting wetly. I hope that makes sense. So one more example I want to show you. This is Milnotonia sunset. And here you can see classic sign of cell damage because of cold. I pushed the orchid to its limits at the beginning of the winter, assuming it could handle my colder temperatures. It did not like it one bit. I think I pushed it too soon. So you can see how the cell damage reflects here, very similar to what it looks like here. Different reasons, but the effect is the same. And the oldest bulb as well is showing the same kind of damage. I know that it was cold because of how I pushed it at the beginning of the winter. This is firm. It looks horrible, but it is absolutely firm and it is growing a new growth as is the one in the back. This is not a time to be going in to aesthetically improve the look of the orchid because there is nothing wrong with the pseudobulb except superficially. So this is not to be mistaken for rot. If this were soft to the touch, exactly like the one in the back here, we don't like soft at all, then of course it would be time to intervene. But just because it doesn't look nice, well, the only way I get to know my orchids if I push them to their extreme. So let's try and see if we can't intervene and clean up these two. I'm leaving the coilostylus well alone. If I don't get this right the first time, in between every single cut, it is important to sterilize your clippers, scissors, snips, anything that you use. Even though we may need to make repeat cuts and it stays within the same orchid, it could be that part of the rhizome already has a little bit of fungus on it. And we don't want to move that fungus forward into the rhizome if we don't get the first cut right. So don't be nervous about this because you can cut as many times as you want. Just make sure whatever tool you use in between cuts gets sterilized. I'm quite fortunate because I have two pieces in here and this is the back end, so I'm not dealing with any roots around this area. There we go. And you can see that little bit of fungus was already trying to make itself comfortable. I hope that is in focus. I have some serious glare from the sun. So we got rid of that. Let's check our cut. Just for curiosity's sakes, it's looking fine. If you think you might be seeing a purple ring, that's not it. When a rhizome is this woody, it will look brown around the edge, but everything's okay in here. 
and it is still firm. So that's a good thing. There is no decline in the sturdiness of the rhizome. So we took care of that. Now, just to apply a little bit of cinnamon on the cut. If there were roots around the back here, I would be using dragon's blood because I don't want to be affecting any roots with cinnamon that could desiccate the velamen and take out the roots. But seeing as there are no roots and it was quite easy just to go in with a little bit of cinnamon, that was my go-to this time around. Now, Peggy Ruth Carpenter. This could be a little bit more tedious. I have to remove some of the leka first and then we'll have a look-see what we're working with. So I'm hoping that the footage I just took is clear to see. The pseudobulb had already ripped at the base. From me handling it, it is really softer than I thought. And that's a good thing because we already, once again, sterilized our snips, exposed the base very, very well to the best of our ability. And normally I could now twist this bulb off because it is that soft. It's already bruised and damaged, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try and get in and get to the rhizome because I don't want, if there's a problem with that bulb and it has got bacteria on it, I don't want that in my pot. So we're going to try and do the best we can on camera as well as just cutting the rhizome in one go. Peggy Ruth Carpenters are tough rhizome growers, but I think we've done it. Ta-da! So here you can see the damage just by handling it. There's nothing wrong here that I can see. I don't see any perpetuating of fungus. It doesn't smell bad either, and that is always a good sign. If there were a pungent decay odor now coming from this opening from this wound, I would be very worried because that means bacteria, which means it has oozed out of the gaps, which means it's now in my media, and you can take it from there. What else would need to be done? Repot, clean the media, etc. But nothing is happening in this case. Let's have a look if the sun glare will let it focus. That rhizome is looking mighty fine, but I'm glad to be rid of this bulb. It's over four years old, at least in my care. Goodness knows how old it is in reality. Now, shall we treat with cinnamon or do we leave the wound open? In this case, I am going to get my dragon's blood and dab dragon's blood at the end because look at all those gorgeous roots in there. Yeah, cinnamon would take care of those and we don't want that. I'll be right back. Just a little dab right at the end. That'll take care of things and it won't damage the roots. So now that we've dealt with all that, you might be thinking, well, all that has to dry out now. And yes, if you are growing in organic media, let it dry out, not a problem whatsoever, do not refill. However, in my case, I'm growing with leka and self-watering. These roots are used to a very wet environment. You can tell they are fully saturated with moisture. I have to protect those roots. If I want this to dry out on its own, then I'm gonna lose the roots because they will go as well, seeing as their environment has changed. And the beauty about dragon's blood is that it seeps into the tissue. So no matter if it's dried out or not, the liquid is gonna do its job. And for that reason, I'm gonna just fill up my media around the base again. And then there's something I wanted to know if you were interested to stick around. Have you ever seen the inside of a pseudobulb? <laughs> I mean, very rarely do we take a very nice, fresh green pseudobulb and take it apart, right? We don't normally take these off and just dissect them. At least I don't. <laughs> but how about one that has declined? Let's have a look. If you're still interested, we'll just add that on at the end just to, you know, why not? Which way shall we attack this? <laughs> Ooh, yuck. It's squishy. Ooh. <laughs> it gets a little harder at the top. Ew, gross. Ew. 
Do I sound like somebody in biology class? <laughs> Ew, gross. Anyway, <laughs> look at this. It looks like a mango. An overripe mango. Still no smell though. That's great. But yuck, you see all these juices that are dripping? If they are filled with bacteria, and usually by this stage they are, this is hot stuff and you don't want that anywhere near your orchid. So we did what we did right on time. Now, just because we're having so much fun, <laughs> cross section, there you go. Lots and lots of fiber, amazing. Are we done yet? Have we had enough yet? <laughs> Look at that. Anyway, I find these kind of things super interesting and very rarely do I get to do this. Luckily, thankfully, grateful that I very rarely get to do this. Really appreciate your time. I hope that you found this video interesting, if not a little bit entertaining as well. You know the drill if you have any questions. The comments are there for a reason. So in the meantime, thank you so very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.